Caves of Squid Review by once again our Lord Overlord and Savior Seth Tenefer. So let's take a look and see what the heck this is all about. Hey, hey, people. Hey, Seth hey, master. Here. Have you ever dug too deep and found something? With my thumb, yes. They don't want you to know. Sandy Lowe. What the fuck is all of this? Guess I'll show this old time waster. Seth would never dug 30 feet. That one who's she? What is this why can't dimension? I reach her? Oh, it's the dimension of the D. That D. You ever fallen out with someone and restored your friendship using yes. quantum entanglement to retroactively rewrite history and save them from a car crash? I'm sorry, that what? That's never way actually too... happened. No, no, uh, Have what? you ever wanted to skip a lifetime of formal education yes. just by cooking a banana? And finally, you Have you ever had a fungal infection on your shit. arm that, despite your best efforts, won't go away? No problem. I... Just cut it off then stab Whoa. a syringe filled with anabolic growth hormone can get your dad to cut it off for you then becomes the yamato and becomes a will form of power hey a question about terracos how often you do them once a month in page right into your chest and grow a new one as you well know mushrooms are a great source of protein they i just are. hope you're not about the origin of that protein everything <laughs> said could be described as the raving of no, a yeah, no, me. Paranoid schizophrenic, but it isn't. It's an everyday occurrence in the caves of Quud, which I'm not sure how to say. So we'll just by a pool of lava just use the acronym Minecraft? instead. Cock is like the negligent supervisor to a kindergarten daycare. When the kids ask him if they can collectively mutilate themselves in the sandbox, he yeah, doesn't say bye. no. Don't do that. He says, give it a try. See what <laughs> happens. You merely adopted the darkness. I was molded it, molded it. <laughs> Caves of Quad is an open-ended, sandbox roguelike which is still in development. Despite this, it's entirely playable and extremely fun. Fun, which I define as I spent half a day with my screen looking like this. this and I had to a kill a man animism. for his tattoo gun ah. so I could drink the ink, pull the cord on a flashbang, and explode it into my open eyes. Why? Because in this game, that's how you cure monochromia. If Why? pain and suffering are the extra edge to your enjoyment, you're gonna have a great time. If you're asking yourself right now, Seth, what the fuck am I looking at? Exactly, what the fuck am I looking at? Exactly. Might not be your cup of tea, at? but I don't drink tea because they tampered my water supply, and ever since I started drinking from a public tap, I've been getting more and more. Of hey, they all look pretty cute, boy. Wait, what? Oh, this is like the cheerleader effect, you know? You look at them as a group, it's like, oh, they are such cute, uh, anime waifus. And then you look at them and eventually you realize they might be packing. They come equipped with something extra, extra spices. Are these androgynous body pillows. Let's be real here. <laughs> Caves of Quud. Caves of Could Cock is not the prettiest of games. This is probably the only game you could get caught playing in the office and have your boss look at the screen and think, damn, my man's Excel spreadsheet looks <laughs> fucked up. It's not a very visual game. Damn, Even though there are some nice visuals here and there, you're gonna have to use imagination. And imagination. if you can't, take my word for it that this random collection of pixels is actually a small farming community. So, what's the story of Wait, 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 hold up. What's with this pixels. small farming community with, with centaurs, hot man, big gorilla dude in the background, and a... Hydra! Wow! Very wholesome! Main community. So, what's the story of Quud? I don't know. There we used to be an advanced time. transhumanist <laughs> civilization living on Quud, but they're not around anymore. Instead, oh. we got mutated everything, from humans to trees, from Shit. pigs to chimpanzees. Everything thinks, feels, and the plants- Wait, what? Oh joy, another meat being. Please, tell me you're here to buy something. What the shit? Plants talk? talk behind your back. Welcome to Quud. It's a complete madhouse, but hey, it's very colorful. To play this stupid game, you need to make a character, for which you've got two options, mutant or truekin. What's the difference? Mutants are genetic freaks, and they randomly mutate their genome as they level up, which includes, but not limited to, multiple heads, multiple feet, multiple hands, two hearts, paralyzing stingers, regrowing limbs, the ability to fly, the ability to induce a brain aneurysm, spontaneous combustion, Combustion, teleportation, oh. phasing through solid. So basically, you're milk and you're an X-Man. And even huh? infinite nutrition from the sun because you're. What the fuck? You're Kryptonian now? Skin is made of chlorophyll. So, what's the downside? You're a horrific abomination. And if you encounter a certain holy inquisition of turbo augmented race purists, they'll kill you on sight. Oh, Conversely, true fuck. to the name, true kin are humans that haven't mutated.
Uh, Giga Chat. They don't get mutations. They get cybernetic augmentations. Whoa! These don't come cheap. You first need to obtain an implant, whether by chance or by cutting the electronics out of a dead Templar. Holy then shit, you need to find an nice. autonomous upgrade terminal, which, upon detecting that you are indeed a pure-blooded human, refers to you as aristocrat what? and allows you to install as many implants as you want, provided your body has space and provided you did not forget to upgrade your cybernetic software license. Because huh? even if a world is over, we cannot forget the importance of arbitrary bureaucratic administration. Wait, what? Somebody will activate the read Microsoft software and tell me that. And by what? God, huh? you're going to follow strict HR protocol to get your transhumanist upgrades. Every wow, registered cybernetic secure, in your body huh? runs a license cost. The total cannot exceed the license, which you have to upgrade using cybernetic credits. These are exceptionally rare, and there's no easy way of finding them. And rightly so, because cybernetics are absolutely ridiculous. Tired of your tiny, feminine hands? Yeah! Giant hands. What? Afraid of dying? On board, intravenous, AI-controlled injectors designed to pump you full of life-saving chemicals depending on the situation what instantaneously. The Do you want to fabricate narcotics in the middle of combat? We can install fingers on top of your fingers. Uh, and if you ever I... change your mind, you can swap them out for something else. However, amputating your legs to replace them with a set of motorized... That's just lit tank treads is unfortunately an irreversible process oh. personally i recommend you play a mutant when starting out there's not really any bad choices in character creation but realistically don't get too attached to your first dozen once you're <laughs> more confident you can play trukin instead and abuse the system so hard you'll forget the original purpose of this game attributes are simple combat is even simpler which is convenient is because fighting is the main way to level up you're going to be doing a lot of fighting and death is an ever-present reality especially Especially at lower levels, uh, if I'm a salt hopper. What is a salt hopper? You were killed by a salt hopper. What a grain of salt that hops, especially at lower levels. What is this? levels if well, i'm uh, going to be very honest wild, with you, huh? most of you will reach red rock for one of the early quests and get stoned to death by a pack of bloodthirsty <laughs> baboons my <laughs> advice get a gun there's a lot of dangers out there but bullets don't discriminate they only penetrate this game is all about <laughs> risk management and there's no hey that rhymes bullets don't discriminate they only penetrate and they should penetrate telling what you're going to encounter because nearly everything is randomly generated and oh. unique to your save file the settlements the cultures the lore the layouts of dungeons and dwellings across the world and mm. even the pharmacological treatment for what? different types Ow. of disease are built completely Ow. out of rng amazingly it actually works most of the time yeah. the only things that stay the same are the location of unique unique settlements, the topography of the map, and of course, the main quest line. Caves of Quid is quite unique in this regard, since most roguelikes don't have an overarching story. It's currently unfinished, so consider it entirely optional. If you're looking to follow an objective, and possibly, probably, most likely, die in a process. That's if it makes you feel any better, most sick. players get to Golgotha, and then they quit. In my case, I got to Golgotha, came back, and then I realized that wasn't the hard part. What did he mean by this? Your is so and tongue is solid. A soldier. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm not gonna tell you. You're gonna have to experience that for yourself. I'm not joking bleed? when I say this game has one of the steepest difficulty curves and one fatal mistake could end your entire playthrough. Or, you know, oh, just shit. hit Alt F4 and uh, <laughs> never tell anyone. <laughs> Let me tell you about mechanics. Wow. Firstly, overlay UI. Turn it on. I have no idea why it's not the default, but it's virtually unplayable without it. There's a lot of interesting monster designs in this game. Mm -hmm. Interesting in their design to creatively Holy reduce shit. Your, left arm, the your, face is your the life center. expectancy. Oh, 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 oh. Most common cause of death, a brick wall. All, because for some huh? reason, mimics are level 25 and still generate where they shouldn't. That's the true souls experience. Good programming. Just like choosing Unity to be the basis of your sandbox roguelike. Yeah. How about Rusty Sawblade that dismembers on every hit? I hope you have an extra head, because otherwise it's game over. On the bright side, oh, equipping your severed face as a homemade facial accessory is both fashionable and attractive. Yeah. Do you like bananas? How about being peeled like a banana? Because huh? for banana trees. But the banana trying to stuck in the grip to tea when advice, which is what's a good choice of About half the banana trees in this game, the fruit comes to them. This huh? may surprise newer players as pressing auto explore in the banana grove is a guaranteed single click shortcut to being disemboweled. What? 
Have you ever you wondered about the struggle of living trees? with dyslexia? If so, encounter a psychic master and his slaves, and you won't have to wonder anymore. <laughs> and why not <laughs> say, fuck it, let's add a giant magnet to the game? Because stripping you of your dignity is no longer enough. We're no. going to forcibly strip you of your items as well. What? And considering most people have auto pickup turned on by default, watch as your character is forced into an infinite dance of losing items, picking them up, only to lose them again <laughs> until you starve to death or smash a escape fast enough to turn it off. You know, the Great Pyramids Shit. of Egypt? Imagine they could fly. Now, huh? imagine you fused it with a Sherman T-34 Calliope and huh? expanded the rocket tubes to a hundred. Not too what? bad when you consider a rocket salvo is only ten, unless they get you up against a wall, in which huh? case you get slammed repeatedly until they empty the entire rack. And what then the they shit? fabricate and replace each and every high-explosive missile in a single turn. At this point, oh, why not days. give it an automatic form? force field, and the ability to randomly teleport across the map. Everything described as an enemy inside Caves of Quud. Is it a unique optional boss fight? No, what? it is a common occurrence in the Deathlands, known oh, only shit. as a Chrome Pyramid. And if you see your screen vibrating and glitching, it's a good time to leave. If that sounds overwhelming, let me assure you that's not the case. Because every creature in this game, from birds to trees, plants to ants, baboons to raccoons, everything belongs to a specific faction. And their relation to you is dependent on your reputation. Has despised you. Even though someone will attack you. What the fuck? you're hated, even the peaceful ones will try to rip you apart. If what? you're loved, even the most aggressive members will protect you as one of their own. This Whoa. applies to others as well. Chimps eat the fuck out of monkeys. And oh, the wait, relation what? between factions controls their behavior. Yeah, I want to welcome in their holy say places you wear a I saw that one. This tricks baboons into thinking you're one of their own. Oh, so once you go full monkey, you're welcome. So you go... <laughs> Wait, is Bamboo the monkey? I'm sure it is. That doesn't mean they're not aggressive. That just means they're not aggressive to you. Well, they hunt. <laughs> they hunt monkeys. They corral them in. It's the most ruthless shit. Because oh, there's shit. a video of this chimp eating a monkey while it's alive. Yeah. And it's holding on to the monkey and biting its hips. Yeah. And it's pulling chunks of meat. Yeah. And the monkey's screaming like, Aah! So, how do you influence reputation? Reputation isn't affected by helping or killing normal people. Only celebrities. What? Much like real life, if you kill a lot of short people, they won't rise up against you. <laughs> but if you kill a famous Minecraft YouTuber the size of a small... Mandalorian Gaming? Wait, what? ...all child, they'll start to notice. Every oh faction my. randomly generates legendary characters and... Don't get a legendary salt kraken. ...and interacting, what? bonding, or straight up murdering them will influence your reputation. Reputation, depending on that character's personal history. For example, what? this is a legendary bat. <laughs> the four winged baboon queen. What? The fudge? <laughs> Loved by baboons, they like disliked by robots for digging up the remains of their ancestors. What do you mean by ancestors? It's just robotic remains. That's nothing. Just lost technology. Hated by the villagers of Akua for stealing a cherished heirloom. Disliked by the villagers of Alamua for selling a map of their vaults to adventurers. Wow, that's kind of scummy. Equipped. Mission by carved by hammer. Steel war hammer. Oh, interesting. She is naturally loved by her people. Uh. However, she accidentally dug up some robot's dead grandfather. Probably <laughs> a TI-84 calculator. She also <laughs> sold confidential <laughs> banking details from one village and stole some shit from another. Quite understandably, mm. these factions mm. don't like her. And smacking her dead with a heavy branch would probably make a lot of people, excluding those that use shit as a projectile, <laughs> incredibly happy. Now, the most precious resource in quote is water. There's oh. not much of it around. So the act of sharing your water is one of the most culturally significant actions you can take. Your first is mine, Fanta, my water is yours. Fanta. Performing a water ritual will bond you together and strengthen Wow. Relations. The factions that like them will like you even more, but the factions that don't will dislike you by association. However, ah. sharing water with another, only later to betray your brother, is the worst crime you can possibly <laughs> commit, and even the enemy of thy enemy will regard you, the Kinslayer, with open hatred, as Ooh. will every faction in the game. Of course, you can always use a Schrodinger's page. Remember, huh? it's not considered historical revision when you're doing it with quantum entanglement. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
What As the fuck Bluetooth is happening? mentioned, water is the most Wait, valuable commodity. That's why we don't have currency. Water is currency. We huh? don't go by greenback or gold. We go by water. And we trade it by the dram. One dram of water is approximately one-eighth of a fluid ounce, or about 3.6 ml. It, it is the consumed. smallest unit of trade. And a water skin can hold up to 64 drams of fluid, 8 fluid ounces, or about 230 ml. Huh? In Caves of Quood, we drink our currency. Yeah, In this why? world, poverty <laughs> isn't begging on the streets. Poverty is dying of thirst. And so, you need water to live or trade. Meaning, your currency is actually damn heavy, and there's only Shit. so many water skins you can carry around. It's an interesting system, effectively forcing you to trade valuables for other valuables, and measure out water to even out the difference. But to even earn your so water, complex. you're going to have to go into the great unknown. Explore, plunder, and pillage your way across the world, and hopefully, you can come back alive. It's going to be dangerous, so but when complex. the alternative game, is man. certain death, it's I like, think I'll take my options. Like, Survival is easy, but game. the game offers you a Shit. diverse variety of skills to help you stay alive. Each time you level up, you get skill points, which can yeah, be freely distributed to then. suit your character. Finding combinations that work is a matter of experimentation. For example, I once made a mutant with six arms with uh. an axe in each hand. Oh, Axes shit. specialize in dismemberment, and dual welding specializes in attacking simultaneously with each arm. Ooh. Each turn, my abomination took off up to six limbs, including Ooh. the head. And believe me, everything eventually runs out of limbs. On top of that, Damn, you'll run into okay. items you don't... <laughs> General Kenobi moment. <laughs> Understand, these will be described as an artifact and require successful identification to properly use. For example, if your character is a complete dumbass, he has no concept of a folding chair. What? Instead, he'll see it as a collection of strange tubes. Also, don't do this with stuff you don't own, because in the process of delicately smashing it to pieces, you might unintentionally break it. And the excuse of, sorry, I was just identified doesn't work when you're being violently murdered by a oh pack no! of villagers. Artifacts <laughs> are amazing and offer you great flexibility, often augmenting or replacing abilities Ooh, you don't wing. have with their mechanized technological equivalent. These include, but are not limited to, instant teleportation to any XYZ wow. coordinate, biodynamic oh, fuel cells powered by blood, handheld nuclear grenades, or uh -huh. even a pair of rocket skates mm. designed for their intended purpose to burn down every forest in the game. Like not only can you use them, but with a tinkering skill, you can also craft them. And provided you've got the appropriate blueprints, you can not only craft them, but also modify them to your heart's content. And uh -huh. for the longest time, that seemed like the limits of this game. Until I went further beyond and Even discovered and beyond. cooking. Imagine huh? living in cooking. a world where the difference between life and death is decided almost entirely by what you had for breakfast that day. Because what? that's huh? what cooking is to caves of... What? Oh, wow. When everything is so mutated, even consuming the mutant will give you their properties. What? And adding more mutants to the dish will increase the possibilities no, of your No, I will never eat my breakfast. You can make me. I will do the superior way, which is drinking my breakfast. Okay, what they do here? See, drinking is literally life or death here. Ridiculous combination. For example, I can engineer a chance to heal to full health on any tick of damage. Then I pour acid on my feet and become immortal. Or I can use a mental mutation to spawn a huge number of plants that explode when you step on them. Eat a gecko that gives me complete immunity to fire and huh? intentionally cause a chain reaction that turns the entire map into lava while oh, leaving shit. myself untouched. Or Ooh. I could ask a gigantic sewer slug for his favorite soup recipe, drink it, and turn myself permanently into a gigantic sewer slug <laughs> that stores, pressurizes, and spits entire rivers of acid. With all that- That's perfect for me! I like to spit on people! That knowledge, the only thing left is to go deeper. Many people go into caves and they don't come back. Usually Shit. they have stupid names like Nutty Putty Cave. <laughs> A man Putty? actually died there. There's a mother out there that had to explain to her kids, yeah, your your father unfortunately passed away in a nutty, nutty putty, putty cave. Do you want <laughs> that? Be because everything I've told you up until now has been the surface of Quud. What does Sorry, that mean? What? It means I've played long enough to see the game for what it really is. As 
series of challenges that appear impossible until you realize every problem has a solution. And once the puzzle pieces click together, you'll reach that epiphany that the entire system Galaxy is, explain. by design, designed to be subverted. The sandbox wants you to break it. It wants you to achieve your goal in the most creative way possible. Let uh -huh. me tell you about the real caves of quood. For a start, we need a lot of money. We don't have need time water. to earn it, so we're going to print it. Welcome huh? to the lava economy, because what? lava is extremely valuable. One dram equals 16 drams of water. Okay, great. Okay. However, we can only store it safely inside a one dram glass file. A water uh -huh. skin holds 64, but starts burning the moment you put it in. Previously, I could extinguish the fire caused by the lava by pouring water on it and leaving uh. the water skin perfectly intact for me to sell. The developers patched this out and reduced the value of lava twice, ah. but that didn't stop me. Instead, I streamlined the process. Normally, fungal <laughs> colonies lava produce lava, which is a good source of early money and parasitic infections, but their capacity is limited. We need industrial quantities. You need oh, to find yeah. and identify a thermal grenade and a freeze grenade. Any generation works, but a Mark III is preferable. Next, we need bananas. Either Hi. six days stilt or she banana growth. Preserve Welcome. it into sun-dried bananas, cook it, gain psychometry. Use psychometry to read the early history of every artifact in your inventory without paying for a data disk ever again. Get tinkering to level one so you can disassemble scrap and craft grenades. Go to the desert canyon, locate a nice pocket of shale rock. Quick trivia, mm -hmm. what's the melting point of shale rock? A I have no about clue. a thousand degrees. Oh, Chuck shit. purple grenades in quick succession until it melts. Congratulations, we've just made lava. Fill as many water skins as you can hold and throw them far away. Now refrigerate them. Congratulations, huh? you have now freeze-dried your lava. Head back to town and buy whatever you want. With the oh. Federal Reserve forever printing lava, we don't have to worry about money anymore. You Next, just we need to make the game, game harder. Liquids are important to this game. Liquids are vital. Liquids also mix together and get tainted in the process. Would you like it if a woman stepped in your bowl of cereal? Uh, yes. Don't answer that. At the six-day <laughs> stick, there's a merchant of interest. He sells liquids, sometimes exceptionally <laughs> rare liquids. He's going to be the catalyst to our success. But there's one problem. He's only one man. We need more. Have a look at my game. Now, let's read the names together. Iker Merchant. Clone of an Iker Merchant. Clone oh. of a clone of an Iker Merchant. Oh, you get the idea. Oh, we're going no. to buy his cloning solution, pour it on his body, and watch him multiply. And oh, then no. we're going to buy cloning solution from his clones to multiply multiply them as well. Oh, no. Why? So we can buy more cloning solution to duplicate any merchant we desire. Oh, it no. takes some time, but first you have to <laughs> cloning job, cloning job, cloning job, crop, cloning job, or you can enjoy the highlighted. harvest. Now we're going to buy our way to immortality. How? Huh? By purchasing every file of neutron flux, and then you're going to cook some gravity. Neutron you flux gives you gravity? a permanent plus one to your armor value, with a one in four chance of gravitational collapse. What so, do you mean gravitational I don't like those collapse? Odds. Neither do I. Take a sphinx salt injector, stab it into your arm. Oh my god, why do we have so much things that's gonna be stabbed into different parts of our body tonight? Jesus. Start cooking. If your body collapses Hold under up. the weight of a neutron... Let him go cook. You sent an inner device. Would I like to return to your start, start of emission? go back. Because that never really happened. Because uh -huh. precognition is a vision of the future, not the present. And if you don't like that theoretical timeline, you go back to a divergent point in time when you first injected that cocktail. What is this? But Walk around, live life, and try again, when the deterministic dice roll of RNG will give you the outcome you desire. Yes, ah. this game has saves coming. Let's go! The mechanics. Reach immortality. Keep eating bananas. The potassium is good for you, and good for your newfound ability to craft nearly every item in the game. Next, the one and only reason I play... Tr Jeez. Fucking the game is to up so much. The Templars. Unique Templars carry a very special cocktail. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Unfortunately, they're extremely trigger happy, and they have a tendency to inject it upon any sign of conflict. As a true kin, I simply walk up to them and buy it for a pathetic sum of money. What is it? It's an injector filled with eater nectar. Injecting what? it. Eater nectar. Game one chance of tonic. It gives what? you a permanent plus one to a random attribute, but oh. that's not good enough. We're going to preserve it and condense the nectar, and then we're going to use precognition and cook it, which gives us a one in four chance of getting plus one in all <gasps> of our attributes permanently. However, what? these are quite rare, and I can't know if I'll ever find another. So first, I find a high-level merchant, clone them repeatedly, and buy metamorphic polygel. This what? is cloning solution for items. So now I can theoretically no. scale my character to an inch. <laughs> Wait, what? Team Jacob? You are on Team Jacob? You are on the 
Winning team. Nice. Good, good. I like that. Yep, nice. Infinite amount of armor, infinite amount of attributes, and once I clone all the bookstores, an infinite amount of Schrodinger's pages that I, <laughs> I can use to gain an infinite amount of reputation. Holy shit! Are you a god now? What form of power is this? And still, I get one shot by a fucking rusty. Huh? You saw. Remember that chrome pyramid I talked what? about? Previously, nobody actually knew how to deal with these until one insane madman EMP'd the force field, charged the chrome pyramid, and with a small flick of a blade, disarmed it. Yes, he ripped off the entire swarm rack. That huh? same swarm rack can be picked up and used. Huh? However, the average player can only hold a weight of about 300. This thing weighs 1,500. So we modify it, reducing its total weight down to zero. Wait, huh? You're going to do 6% to the weight. I, I don't point, get it. How, how? doesn't really matter. With the exact same method, I disarmed every other robot in the Deathlands and used them to craft spheres of negative weight, what? allowing us to effectively roleplay as a high-speed missile launcher. But even <laughs> that was still not enough. I was tired of paying for goods, so I stabbed a merchant with a love injector and robbed him blind. <laughs> then I stabbed a legendary bear, so we could improve human race relations by sharing honey and the location of local beehives. I also also stabbed the Pope, made him follow me back to town, and watched as he started a race riot because his reputation with the unwashed masses was not very high. Instead, I wanted companions that don't murder everyone, so I sprayed sentience on a block of concrete and, of concrete? and convinced the block of animated concrete to follow me into combat. What? I found out. Oh my god, this is the Isekai vending machine all over again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Concrete is not only indestructible, it can also hold weaponry huh? in its hands. Unfortunately, my companion died when I foolishly tried to slam through concrete using concrete. No, I broke concrete a concrete summer. wall. I lost a concrete friend. No. But none of what I said even holds a candle compared to being a high-level esper. Here are huh? some examples of what you can do. Surround yourself with a permanent force field. Use instant transmission. Turn walls Money. into lava. Turn brains into liquid using your mind from the other side of the map with clairvoyance. Dominate every merchant to give you their life savings. Dominate a domesticated pig. Put a nuclear warhead in its mouth and what? turn it into a remote controlled suicide bomber. Split your Jesus Christ. self into seven identical copies with identical powers and turn the screen into a living nightmare. Use ego projection. Project your HP so high it doesn't even render in the UI. Die anyway. <laughs> oh Reverse the outcome with precognition. Follow Meow. one of the billion divergent timelines instead. What kind of wild crazy game is this? The mass mind. Pluck sentience from the universe. Huh? Reset your cooldowns and do it all over again. As you can probably tell, it was so damn powerful that the developers had to code in their own countermeasures. Now, the more powerful you are, the more others start to You're notice your psychic glibber increases and other espers will will come to take uh -uh. your mind for their own. Uh -uh. The attacks become so brutal, the burden of power so great, that you might even be tempted in your moment of weakness to eat a fuck ton of humble <laughs> Yo, eat a humble pie, bitch, and calm down. Or pies, because in this game, the bakeries are owned by Nietzsche, and his pastries induce ego death. But the what? player ego will death? forever subvert the developer. Do you know how to end the pursuit? To stop the hunt? To escape? You have to accept first that there is no escape. Oh my goodness! Yo, you bring an extra dimension, glitter match, number of and aspers for society. This page is native to the dimension known as the Dominion of Scarlet. People from other dimensions are gonna come and screw you over? Okay, Shit. And allow yourself to be caught. And in the briefest of moments, you dominate your pursuer oh, and no. kill yourself. Your old flesh is gone, but inside new flesh, your mind lives on. No this game way! is truly How exceptional. Wild is this shit? Whoa! But it does have its problems. One, it's made on Unity. That's not ah. immediately noticeable. But when a small cloud of gas accidentally falls down a pipe and has to generate 10 levels of dungeon for the sake of simulation, yeah, you're gonna notice. Two, sometimes an essential quest NPC contracts a fungal infection and is oh, no. regrettably chopped to pieces. Oh, sometimes no. the sandbox breaks and you lose your progress. The oh, game no. practically expects you to use console commands to fix itself, so don't feel too bad about it. Three, most <laughs> of the game is randomly generated. 
but you can tell immediately if a character is pre-written because hey. the first Tumblr fursona you meet with <laughs> give you an option to ask about her neon purple hair and what? quirky way of talking. I like the writing in this game, but come on, disliked by the water barons for her queer appearance? <laughs> Really? Maybe. She just looks like shit. Maybe. Listen, I can respect the fact that you can self-insert your OC girlfriend, but mm -hmm. at least give us the option of dismembering her. And four, I want more. There's not enough Nani. of this world, and you're spending too much of your time banning me off your dick. <laughs> like the video too, where you put it in your suggestions sucks. <laughs> Discord for making reasonable oh, no. gameplay suggestions. In oh. Initially, no. I dismissed this game as Talk overly me. simplistic. I come back now to tell you how deep it goes. Even with a time given, I've only told you a fraction of what- Destroy your advice on the release of Uncrisis Chamber is multiplied too faster than anything else. Don't expect it to visibly eliminate it and it's best through the I know. world. It should be ah. noted that the writing in this game is fantastic. Mm. There's so much lore, like how the banana ranchers in this game are plants themselves. Huh? It's plants enslaving plants. Huh? It's plantation owners beating other plantation owners. They just work- what? the hierarchy. It's like my slave name used to be whipped cream. Now hey. I'm whipping cream. <laughs> the music in this game is very charming and sets the tone that you're in a completely alien environment where nearly every rock, tree, and flower is very much alive. It's Holy a beautiful, shit. wonderful, and janky mess of a game. And despite being in early access, it's already given me... Oh my god! 200 hours! Hundreds of hours of enjoyment. As such, last two weeks, 78 hours. I give it a Jesus. completely random yet quantifiably high score, which can only be expressed on a graphical calculator. That looks like an infinite mess. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's not for everyone, and it's incredibly neurotic. But if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, give it a try. I we might, negotiated huh? a deal, however small, for about 10% off for the next couple of days on GOG. Follow Ooh. the link, and you save a single dollar. Let's go. Wait, who's that? on the face is that we as uh, always okay. more content to come so stay <laughs> tuned that content will consist of more than four pixels wait i saw something i might like nice nice Nice. Just of more than four pixels. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and banking. The Merchants Guild doesn't care about you, but the aggressive members will attack you. <laughs> Hashtag Tomboy. These boys, videos. Right? Except this one is like completely Tomboy, free huh? because I can't make you pay money for abstract text adventures. You're all truly wonderful. And Take so care and have a good one. Obscure Game Review is crazy nuts, man. Thank you so much for watching this video.